Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, Astro Ventures. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR or mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventure. Now, normally I do video updates on this channel every Friday. However, a target of opportunity has presented itself. I hadn't covered it yet, and I don't want anybody at home missing this. So what we have coming up here is Comet 67P. Now, this comet will be located and passing through the Gemini twins, the Gemini constellation. Now, the interesting thing about this comet, Comet 67P, back in 2016, the European Space Agency actually had traveled to it, landed on it, grabbed some samples, and then headed back to Earth to return them. So it's kind of cool first human visited comet. Now, some points of significance. November 3rd, coming up here just shortly at the time of this recording, it's October 31st, Halloween. November 3rd, the comet will reach perihelion. That's the closest point of travel nearest the sun. November 7th, four days later, the comet will be at its brightest. So November 7th, if you can get out there and photograph it. I intend to be out there on November 6th, not quite the brightest, but it lines up with my schedule. November 13th will be perigee, its closest point to the Earth. However, remember, the 7th is the brightest, and every day that goes past that, the brightness will start to fall off. Now, this comet is at a magnitude of 8, approximately, at its brightest point. So, that's going to be just outside of visual. Visual in good conditions is at about a magnitude of six. Now, let's locate it and go over some camera settings. So this is the Gemini constellation or the Gemini twins. And here you can see with this yellow line, this is the path at which the comet 67P will be traveling. And I have two dates of significance marked on there, November 2nd and November 7th kind of giving you a reference point of where to locate it. And it is traveling out from the center of the body of the Gemini twins out through the shoulder and past. Now, to photograph this, if you are one of the viewers that uh, hasn't quite pulled the trigger yet on purchasing a Star Trekker, this one is one that you'll be able to capture yourself using a simple telescope and a 300 millimeter lens. And let me go over some settings real quick. Now, this here is a raw, straight out of camera image of Comet Vertanen. I'm probably killing that name, from 2018. This comet was a magnitude of four, so it was just barely in the visual range. Now, at that time, the settings that I had used was two seconds, ISO 6400, focal length of 300 millimeters, which was an equivalency of 450 on my crop sensor. Now, because this comet, 67P, is going to be a magnitude of eight, I would suggest taking the same shot uh, with the same settings, but kick up your exposure time to four seconds. This, of course, does give you a bit more star trailing, but, you know, my thought is, is that, you know what, if I can capture it, that's great. I'll live with some star trails. If you have a star tracker, that makes life a lot easier for you, and my suggestion to get started. ISO of 800, I would do a two-minute exposure on that, and use the widest open that you have for your lens aperture. I'll be using a 300 millimeter to start and an aperture of f4. That will allow you to get this original raw looking image where you'll be able to identify the target. I suggest starting out wide. Um, you know, like I said, I'm looking at starting about 300 millimeters, maybe 200 until I can identify where the comet is. And then I plan on closing in on it with an eventual, hopefully, 
an eventual equivalency of 900 millimeters worth of focal length. Using my crop sensor stock camera, not modified. And then uh, again, looking to get that two minute exposure. So hopefully, um, you know, you have clear skies where you're at so that you can get out and capture this target. It's not looking good for myself, but it didn't mean that uh, I didn't want to take a moment and throw this out here and give you some settings so that you could get into the ballpark for capturing Comet 67P. Until next time, I wish you clear skies, uneventful nights, and uh, fingers crossed for all of us that we have those clear skies to capture that. And uh, remember, November 7th, that's the brightest point for the comet. Till next time.